Hi everyone, my name is Chris and welcome back to episode 3 of our Full Armour Family Series. In today's episode, you'll need your Bibles, some glue or some sellotape, some pens, some tin foil, and of course, some cardboard. And then there's our activity sheet that you can download from our website, link in the description below, and of course, episode 3 of our Full Armour short film. So, why don't you go and gather all that stuff, watch that episode, and let's get going. Okay, are we all set? Get your Bibles. Let's open them at the passage that we've been focusing on the past couple of episodes. Can you remember where it was from? Ephesians, correct. So get to Ephesians chapter 6 and we're going from verse 13. I'll give you a few seconds to find it. You got it? Shall we read it? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armour, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armour of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith, to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I wonder what today's piece of armour is going to be. Let's recap though. So episode one, we had the belt of truth. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. And when we stand firm, putting on our belt of truth, we are remembering all the true things about God and about who he is and about his son, Jesus. Episode two was the shield of faith. Hold up the shield of faith. And here's one that we made. And I've seen some pictures of you guys with your shield. Hold up the shield of faith. When we hold up our shield of faith, we are having faith in God. We are trusting and believing that he will protect us, that he will guide us, and that he will never leave us. That is his promise to us. Today's piece of armour is the helmet of salvation. Right, here's a question for you. How many of you like to go cycling, or scooting, or skateboarding, or rollerblading? Or anything that's got wheels and goes really, really fast. Yeah? Now, how many of you wear a helmet? Whenever I go cycling, I always remember to put on my helmet. Why do you think we put helmets on our heads when we go out and do something cool and adventurous like cycling or skateboarding? Why? Pretty simple to protect our heads. Because if we fell off head first and didn't have a helmet, we could really damage our heads. Our heads are one of the most important parts of our body and a knock to the head could put the rest of our body out of action. We have to protect our heads. And that's why soldiers, Roman soldiers or, or knights or any kind of soldier would wear a helmet on their head to protect themselves when they go out into battle. Today we're going to learn about one of the most important pieces of spiritual armour, the helmet of salvation. But what is salvation? Any ideas? Why don't you take some time to chat to those around you about what is salvation? What does it mean? Salvation simply means to be saved. For many of us, it's maybe difficult for us to admit that we need to be saved, that we need salvation, and that we can't save ourselves. In the Bible, salvation is when Jesus comes into our life, forgives our sins, and gives us life to the full, which means life as it should be. 
Usually, when we think about being saved, we maybe think about someone who's drowning being rescued from the water, or a fireman carrying somebody out of a burning building, or a doctor helping someone to breathe again when their heart has stopped. Christians believe that in the very beginning God made a perfect world, and in that perfect world put so many wonderful things, including humans. Everything was perfect until the day humans thought that they knew better than God and decided to do things their own way. They disobeyed God, which made him very sad. And because they disobeyed God, he had to send them away and they were no longer connected to him. This was the point that God decided he needed to do something to sort out the mess. Something to rescue his humans and give them a way back to him. The amazing news is this great rescue has already happened. God sent his son Jesus to be a living human in this world. He did that so that Jesus could show all humans living on the earth the way back to God to save them. Jesus lived on the earth and not once did he disobey his father God. He lived a perfect life. And because he lived a perfect life, when Jesus died on the cross, he defeated sin, defeated death and the devil once and for all. When we put our trust in Jesus, we become part of God's rescue plan. Our world is not the place that God wanted it to be. We still do bad things. People still get hurt. And it's still very, very messy. But God wants to save us so that we can come back and live with him. The helmet of salvation reminds us to put our trust in the rescue plan that God has in place. And if we believe that with all our hearts, then we are saved. God fights for us every single day and can never be defeated. So stand firm now with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Hold up the shield of faith and put on the helmet of salvation. I want to share with you now a story from the Bible, which is a great example of how transforming salvation can be. But I'm going to need some help, so I'll be back in a wee minute. Oh, hi everybody. My name's Bob. Oh, it's great to be here. I want to tell you the story about a little man called Zacchaeus. Bob, is that you? Uh, oh, hi oh, Bob. Hi Chris. Listen, I know that story. Do you need any help? Oh yeah, I would love some help actually. Well, there's a costume down there for you. On you go. Nice one. Great, uh, I'll, I'll just go then. Okay Bob, I'm here. Get my costume on. <sighs> okay, you ready? Right. How'd I look? Looking good, Chris. Okay, here we go. A few years ago, well, quite a few years ago in fact, there was a little man called Zacchaeus. Let's call him Zac for short. <laughs> and boy was he short. He was very, very, so very short. short. Uh, oh, I've got an idea. Chris, he was, uh, How about this? He was short. Does that work, Bob? Oh, that's a great idea. Nice one. <laughs> right. Uh, Zach was a tax collector. And being a tax collector meant he wasn't liked by a lot of people. In fact, everybody who knew him. Why? Because he was a thief. Yep, he stole from everybody, which made him very, very rich. <laughs> Uh, one for the taxes, three for me, <laughs> uh, two for the taxes, uh, one, two, three, six for me, <laughs> who am I kidding, I'm taking it all, it's all for me. <laughs> one day, Zach had heard that a man named Jesus was heading into town. 
Zack had heard about Jesus before and really wanted to see this man, so off he went into town. I'm going to head into town. <laughs> off we go into town. <laughs> what? Uh, oh man, there's people everywhere. This crowd is massive. How am I going to be able to see Jesus through this crowd? Zack was too short to be standing in a crowd, so he had to do something in order to be able to see Jesus. He thought about climbing on top of someone's shoulders, but nobody liked him enough for that. He thought about jumping high, but he couldn't jump high enough. What on earth was he going what to do? What on earth am I going to do? What? <laughs> I can climb the tree! <laughs> Climbing the tree was really the only option Zack had Off I go. if he wanted to see Jesus. So Zack made his way back through the crowd towards the tree. Zack started to climb the tree and for some reason was Wearing a bicycle hat? What? Health and safety, Bob. I need to protect my head, you know. Because if I fall off the tree at this height and hurt my head, I could be out of action. But that's not in the story. Anyway, oh, he climbed the tree wearing his bicycle hat and finding the perfect position to see Jesus. But what happened next came as a surprise to both Zack and the crowd. Jesus came by. He stopped just below the tree and said, Zacchaeus, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zack was so surprised. I'm so surprised. The crowd were even more surprised. No one could believe what had just happened. Jesus knew Zack's name and wanted to spend time with him. Zack quickly came down from the tree. What? Oh, quickly. Uh, how, how, do, how, do I get, how do I get down quickly from a, from a tree? Oh. Yeah. And he invited Jesus into his home. As Jesus spent time with Zack, something amazing happened to him. As they were having tea, Zack stood up in front of everyone and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Jesus. And if I've cheated anyone in their taxes, I'll pay them back. In fact, I'll pay them back four times as much. Wow, what a change. After hearing this, Jesus responded to the crowd of people, stating that Zack was lost, but now he had been found. Through meeting Jesus, Zack realised that what he was doing was wrong and that he had to change his wrongs to right. From that moment on, Zack was a changed man, changed from the inside and out. And people knew it, they saw it, and they were amazed. Jesus had made a difference in Zack's life. Then Zack did something totally unexpected. He gave back all the money he had stolen. In fact, he gave back four times as much. Thanks, Chris. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. See you. Now, during this very unsettling time in our world's history, I wonder what things we can do to make a difference. What can we do today that can make a difference to those around us? Maybe it's cleaning our bedrooms without being asked. Maybe it's offering to, to make the lunch. Maybe it's sharing some of our toys and treats with our siblings. Or maybe it's as simple as being kind to one another. Thanks for listening, everyone. Stay safe. Oh, and remember, wash those hands. See ya. The story of Zacchaeus is one of my favourite stories in the Bible. I just love how Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was up that tree. Right, it's now time for you to do your craft. So, remember, pieces of cardboard. Now, you could do lots of different versions of, of, a, of a helmet. Um, 
you could put something like that and then something like that to kind of create a helmet or you could just you could stick something in something over the top or you could do something like this and stick it and put some, some stuff around there. You can use the tin foil to decorate that, colouring in pens and stickers and whatever. Be as creative as you want to be. Build your helmet of salvation, add it to your shield of faith with the belt of truth and send in your pictures. I would love to see them. Thanks for watching. Oh, don't forget about the activity sheets that you can download from our website, which is in the description below. And we'll see you next time for episode four. Thanks for watching. Bye.